Lord of God. How's it, everybody? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Once again, bless you another day and uh, Mother's Day eh, today. I hope all you guys, everybody had a beautiful day today, especially mothers. And uh, that, uh, every day is a good day, though, yeah? That God, that God make. God not make bad days. You know? From the beginning, every th- every, after he made everything, he said, oh, it's good. And uh, that, uh, we are blessed here today. Because we get Jesus, yeah, even more on on that. Oh. But yeah, tonight, um, yeah, we praise the Lord in, in spirit and truth and um, in worship with music and my honey gonna be in the word tonight. So, um, yeah, but tonight, um, yeah, let's, let's dedicate this time to the Lord. Amen. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, let's pray. Ah, uh, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come to be here right now in one spirit, in one mind, to worship the, the living God, the one and only God. Ah, oh, Father, we call you for everything. Jesus, oh, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, I just, I just pray that you guide us in this worship tonight and uh, in this service. And uh, whoever's ears and hearts is listening to this and minds, Lord, let them out. And I'm gonna feel up. Let them out. Lord, just turn to you, Lord, right now. All of us, turn us to you. And let us worship you, Lord. The Spirit. Because you are worthy. You know, Lord Jesus said, uh, when you call a disciple, guy, you call them. Gotta be the guys, they are. Was working and they left everything up to follow Jesus. And Jesus, he said, uh, Whoever loses their life will find it, and whoever finds it, they can lose it. But we know, uh, yeah, those of us who believe in, uh, in Jesus, we know that the time is full. When you make up your Lord and Savior, He is Savior in the beginning, but when you make up your Lord, uh, like we honor him, huh? and we follow him, huh? we understand. So yeah, Lord, come on, Mike, we just talk in the middle, but Lord, we love you, we praise you, we're gonna leave you here, we're gonna leave you up here tonight, Jesus. And we follow you, Lord. Where you walk, I'll walk. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life finds, I will follow you. I will follow you. So you wait, I go. All your ways are sure, and I will trust in you alone. Higher than my sight, higher above my light. I will trust in you alone, in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll know. How you serve, I'll serve. If this night finds you, cause I will follow you. I will follow you. Cause you yeah. 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 
Lord, that that's who you are, Lord. That, that you, you, we say you, you love us, Lord. You cannot love us more, you cannot love us less, Lord. And nothing can separate us from that, Lord. But Jesus, you bring us into that, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. We praise you. Have a great God. Lord, you are awesome. There's nothing else on this earth that deserves praise, Lord. Only you. Nothing is worthy except for you, Lord. That's why, no matter what anybody else worship, Lord. Money, things, other stops. You don't only want that is worthy of worship. Because you made the stuff, you made the dirt, you made those things that you made out of love. <laughs> we praise you, Lord, for who you are. I thank you for revealing yourself, Lord, to Jesus. Thank you for um, bringing us to this place, Lord, that we can worship. We choose you, Lord. So, Lord, just be praised. We lift it high, Lord Jesus. Yes, up. What are you turning to? Yeah. 
Persecuted by the world, cause I overcome the world. Or you gonna get, you gonna get trials, and you gonna get trials in the world. Like you should be, be, be a cheerful, cause I have overcome the world. And that's why, even though we stay in the world, gang, we're not a part of it. We're part of the King, Jesus, as King. So whom praise the Lord, Father, we mahalo you for this night and this time. We just keep mahaloing you for everything that you do for us. 
We are there, Lord. We're very thankful to be here and in your presence. So we ask you to just bless your word, Lord, which is already blessed. But bless my hand is mountains. It's coming up, your word, Lord. And I just pray that on there, Lord. Let, the, let the, whatever heart is softened right now, Lord, let that word go into the heart. And let your Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, is me come, come alive. And she told, show us, Lord. Show us your way. Show us your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, sir. Sweet. God bless. One second, Jerry. Look at that. We gotta keep on going. They're all marinating right now. No, Jesus. Look at Jesus. <clears throat> okay, so good evening, Molokai Nez. We're so um, grateful to be able to continue to share the Word of God and, and to um, to worship together. Because even though we're we're all spread out over this island or the state or whatever, um, and we're still able to come together to. Um, trying to see if I can turn off this. I get it. Okay, just that one. Um, it's just such a beautiful thing. And so, I know as a mom, sometimes I get upset. Like, ah, well, my kid, my kid's always on her phone, or you know, all this pelikio with the with the TV or the video games and stuff. But sometimes, you know, technology has brought us something really good in that we could all worship together without having to be in the same place. Even though we long to be together again, um, we're just gonna continue to um, just do what we gotta do and, and praise and worship together in the safest ways that we can. And so um, before we get started tonight, I do just wanna open up in prayer. Um, so if you could bow your heads with me, please, wherever you are. Uh, Father God, we love you so, so much, and uh, we're so grateful that you decided to wake us up this morning, that we're able to um, live amongst our family and friends, Father, and that we just have another day that, that we can choose you over the ways of the world, that we can choose to follow you um, instead of our, our own thoughts or our own ideas or our own desires, Father. I just thank you so much um, for this day, for this this time that we have together to learn more about you, to come closer to you, to seek you. Um, I pray that is what we do here tonight. I pray that it's your words that come out and not my words, that it's what you want your people to hear, Father, and not um, anything that I feel that needs to be heard. So we love you and we thank you. We praise you. Um, and all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. So first and foremost, well, um, happy Mother's Day. To all the moms in our church family, in our community, um, and those that are watching virtually, uh, well, Mother's Day is typically thought of as a way that we can use to honor those who have birthed us or raised us um, as their own. Mothering takes on a new meaning when we see the mother through scripture, as opposed to what we think of when we hear the word mother. Um, and so I just kind of want to get this disclaimer out there that for some of us the word mother brings fond memories um, it just brings our, these memories to the front of our minds whether it's um, fresh baked cookies on a rainy day or our biggest cheerleader in our sports or our academic events um, or if it was a mother that um, you know seemed to get that one impossible gift that we thought was going to be like totally impossible to, to get for like birthday or Christmas and here she comes showing up with it. If we had those experiences, that's what we think of when we hear the word mother. Um, but for some of us, the word mother can bring a reminder of a void that we have so often tried to fill with other relationships, um, whether those relationships were healthy or toxic, that word can also bring um, reminders of disappointment and embarrassment. Um, after comparing the loving mothers we saw accompanying our childhood friends as our family members scramble to have somebody present at our school events. Um, or some, for some of us, even the word mother can bring these images of our biggest adversary um, for reasons that we don't understand already and probably never will. Um, so the word mother can bring on a variety of emotions depending on our own 
relationships with the mother or mothers in our life. And so tonight's scripture, so I just wanted to get that out there, but tonight's scripture comes from the book of John. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the Gospel of John, and it's going to be chapter 14. Chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. It's a little wobbly stand. Okay, and it says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have, I would have told you I am going there to prepare a place for you. Um, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Amen, Lord. So a few years ago, uh, I got really into this website. I'm not going to say any specific names, but I got really into this website that focuses on helping individuals to build their family trees, starting with themselves. So they would be the starting point, and then you just kind of build your family tree. Um, so on this website, you fill out information about yourself and maybe your siblings, if you have some, if you so choose to put your siblings in there. And then there are these empty spaces in which you have to fill information about your parents. So after you put your own information in, this little blank thing comes up where it says, okay, here's you, but what about your parents? And then so if you choose to put in your parents' information, you, I mean, you have to put in your parents' information in order to get that family tree going. So after you put your parents' information in, then another blank spot opens up above their names where it says, okay, what about their parents? And so the more you do this, the more blank spaces pop up. And so you can imagine the amount of time that goes into building this tree. I mean, it's not something that you can just do in five minutes. You gotta, you gotta build this tree. And if you don't have the information there, there's this helpful tool where all you have to do is type in, you know, a name and then um, an electronic copy of a birth certificate or death certificate or um, a census tracking, a census recording, anything like that can, can pop up. So this is what I say, you know, technology has its flaws, but. It, it also brought us like some good things, things that we could use for our benefit. Um, but so you get all the, you start filling all this information and you go and you keep adding names and you keep finding out names and you keep adding those names. And it's something that takes a lot of time. And for some people, for some of us, it can get a little bit addicting um, to just keep plugging in names. But you keep plugging in these names with no purpose other than to be able to look at the finished product. The whole time you're putting in these names, you're like, okay, filling out this tree. I can't wait to see this tree. Um, and the whole point of that tree is just to see from where it is that you came. Where did it come from? Okay, go make this tree. Go find out. So on my dad's side of the family, I was able to go um, back to the early 1700s. And so with documents that I found online and information that I had gotten from my father, I was able to trace back our family lineage all the way to the 1700s. And so, um, and this is a time when, um, these are our Hawaiian ancestors, so for some reason this was a time where all you saw were single names. That's how far back it went, where it was just a single name. There wasn't a first, middle, and last name. 
there was probably no need for differentiation between people because there weren't that many, um, but it was just one name. And so seeing that one name tied to my family tree, I kind of got this feeling, this, this feeling of achievement, that I had achieved something amazing. And so I looked at those single names in those that century of the 1700s, and, um, and I said, wow, this is where I come from. Wow, this is amazing. And I was just excited just from that. Um, and I had gone through generation to generation to generation to lead me all the way to the early 1700s where I could see where I came from. But still knowing in my mind there was more work to do. There were more generations. That wasn't it. Um, there was still more searching to be done. When it came to my mother's side, I didn't find the task as easy or as fun. So my mother's side of the family had um, a few undocumented adoptions. Um, and the reality of people being property became a part of my family tree when it came to my mom's side of the family. There were a lot of things that were missing because my ancestors did not have regular birth certificates or they weren't seen as people because they were property. Um, and so at times, looking at that family tree and searching for information became difficult and even painful at times. To flip through pages of the past to find that everything that it took to make me who I am was plagued with sadness and tragic events and losses. But I hadn't shared with anyone that this particular research grew harder and harder with each tragedy that I saw unfold on these electronic copies of death certificates and census reports um, that showed how frequently the family's stability was shaken. Um, I had it in my mind that in order to find out who I really am, I needed to find out what made me. Maya Angelou once said, I have a great respect for the past. If you don't know where, you're, where you come from, you don't know where you're going. And I think, I think I felt that, and that resonated with me. So I think that's probably what was driving this, this passion to find out who am I, where do I come from? Um, as if it was going to tell me something about what I can do or what I was going to do or what I'm capable of. But in tonight's scripture, so this is all going to tie in together, but in tonight's scripture, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. So a lot of things that have happened already. This is John 14. So Jesus has already watched his disciples speak. There's already been this prediction of his betrayal um, and already this prediction of Peter's denial. So you can only imagine how the disciples were feeling in this moment. All of these things are coming up. Wait, what's happening? Wait, who is that? Wait, what's going to happen? Um, and so now we find Jesus uh, preparing his disciples for his departure. And um, he starts with, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And he goes on to tell them of his departure, but also that he will come again and he'll take his disciples with him. But there's often this focus on the physical aspects of what Jesus is saying. But today's Mother's Day, and we serve a relational God, and, and we're talking about relationships. So tonight, we're going to focus on the relationship aspect of what Jesus is saying. So Jesus is telling his disciples, hey, i got to go. But I'm going in order to do something really great. It's going to be great for you. It's going to be great for everyone. But i got to go. Um, but I won't forget about you, and I won't really leave you because... I am going to come back, and I'm going to make sure that we're all together again. We can feel that in this relationship. We can feel that in the words that he's saying. And Thomas, one of the disciples, says, wait, 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 we don't know, we don't know the way that you're talking about. What, what, where are you going? We don't know what way you're going. How are we going to find you? How are we going to know where to go if we don't know the way that you're taking? And so Jesus tells him, okay, Thomas, it's me. I'm the way. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. It's me. And so for us 21st century readers of scripture, we can look at this exchange and, and in our minds we're like, yeah, Thomas, it's Jesus. Jesus is the way. We know what he's talking about, but Thomas is, is sitting there like, wait, what do you, you're the way. How are you a way? How are you a way? You're a person. You're talking about a road. You're talking about a path. Um, you are not a map, Jesus. <laughs> you know. So throughout the passage of the Bible, Jesus states over and over, he says it multiple times, if you know me, then you know my father. To know me is to know God. 
Um, so the past week was our five-year-old's birthday. And so my family, including my mom, that's, um, that I'm talking about, my family, including my mom, called in to wish our preschooler a happy birthday. And after their exchange, we all started talking about the Family Tree Project. So all of us on the phone have separate accounts for this website. And we each have this goal of filling this family tree. And we're not working together, but we're each filling this family tree. Um, and so as we started talking, just casually talking, blank spaces that have been sitting in my family tree for months, probably even a year, started to get filled just by my mom dropping names, just by my mom saying, oh, you know, she um, adopted so-and-so, or, you know, she ended up living with so-and-so. All of these names started to get filled in my family tree just from casual conversation. Uh, and she was helping us find these missing pieces in our family story. A while later, after we had each gotten off the phone, I remember just sitting there um, and reflecting on how this information that I had searched so long for was just sitting in my mom's mind. It was just there, it was just common knowledge for her, but it was something that I couldn't get. I couldn't hold it in my hand, I couldn't retrieve it, um, but she had it the whole time. Um, but then I, I started thinking, I started thinking, and I realized I had been using my mother as a piece to the puzzle. I simply wrote her name in my family tree above my name as a branch on a tree or just a name to fill a space. But she is the tree. Like it dawned on me, oh my goodness, my mom is the tree. She is the way to the past. She is the story of her family living in the world. And that makes me the same. And so when Jesus is telling his disciples, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's telling them that he himself is all that they need. They don't need to panic. They don't need to scramble. They don't need to flip through information. There's nothing that they have to go and find. They have him. They don't need to be searching high and low for a map a map to find out how to get um, to get to him. My mother's effortless mentioning of names I had never even heard of, making their way into huge holes that had been sitting for months, reminded me that all of who lived before, the stories that shaped the family, whether good or bad, were not just records of information that I needed to search for, but instead I needed to seek my mother. I needed to go to her. She, she holds all of that within her. So Jesus is telling his disciples, I am all you need. You don't need to do any further digging. I have given you all you need to know. For some of us, we can think of our mothers or mother figures in our early life as somehow finding a way to be what it was that we needed rather than giving us what we thought we needed. How is it that mothers, regardless of culture, racial makeup, location or language seem to have this inherent or characteristic attribute of being what we need. Not just giving us what we think we need, but actually being what it is that we need. When we think of a mother, the emotions we have are related to the mother whom we've grown, with whom we've grown, like the mother that raised us or, or the mother that wasn't present in our in the same sense, when we're walking in the world and we hear of God, the Father, we subconsciously relate God to the Father that we've either grown up with or the Father who was not present or the Father that we have never known or the Father that inflicted pain on our family. We, we do this subconsciously, like, God, the Father, well, the only Father I know is, and then we start to fill those blank spaces ourselves. But if we give into this thought of being a child of this father that God is, we find ourselves coming to a place where we see all that a father was meant to be. 
when we meet our Father in God. A Father that cares for us deeply, provides for us daily, promises to never leave or forsake us, no matter what. If this is the kind of Father that raised us, in our families, our experience of our Father God only intensifies because that's already what we think of when we think of a father, somebody who does those things. But when we meet God as our Father, there's this realization with, wow, I thought my dad loved me, and I know he does, but God loves me even more than that. What can we say about mothers? What is it that Scripture tells us about a mother's love? So here's the thing. Um, in order for us to have a full picture of this love of God, this love that we just talked about, this, this, fatherly, um, this fatherly kind of love, in order to have a full picture of how amazing this love is, our relationship, uh, our relational God-breathed scripture uh, painted us this picture of love in a way that we can understand. That's why we know God is love. That's why the, the descriptions are in a way that we can understand because we're like, oh, I know what fathers are supposed to do because that's what scripture says. That's what God says. That's, that's who God is. Um, a father is somebody who shows compassion to his children. So the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. That's in Psalms 103, 13. Or we can look to Romans 8, 15. As a father, so we can, we see God as a father so we can receive the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Or we can look at the scripture um, that we believe to be inspired by God that describes God as a mother also. As a mother who comforts. As a mother who comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Isaiah 66, 13. We can see God as a mother who nurses. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you, Isaiah 49, 13. And we can even see God as a mother hen, as Jesus shared in Matthew 23, 27. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you were not willing so in the ways that God is described as a nursing mother who is the food for her suckling infant, as a comforting mother whose, whose very presence and embrace calms her child instantly, and as a hen that protects her chicks with her very body, gives us a glimpse of a mother's love. In order for us to have a full picture of what it means to be loved by God, <laughs> We're given examples of both father and mother. But why? It's in the relationships of both father and mother that we can begin to comprehend how great the love of God is, that he would love us as a father loves his child, and how a mother loves her child. These are relationships that we are assumed to understand as people. How can women love their children in the way that they do? How is it possible for the love to be assumed of all people groups and throughout time? In making a family tree, it's more like a quest to try to go as far back as you can to find out what it is that makes you. Why are you the way that you are? You want to see how far back you can go. As believers, when we talk about going as far back as we can, we always find ourselves in the book of Genesis, in the beginning in creation. And that's where I found myself and where I decided to put a pause on my family tree. So Genesis chapter 1 verses 20 or chapter 1 verse 27 says, "So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. The inherent love or the, the attribute of um, being a mother that a mother has for her child is out of being created in the image of God. While we live in a fallen world and horrible situations and traumatic events can affect our families, leaving us to salvage what's left or to move on, 
um, it doesn't erase the fact that each mother, each woman, each person that we see walking this earth is created in the image of God. The motherly attributes um, that we benefit from are the attributes of God. When we think about mothers, if I say, what is the first word you think of when you hear the word mother? Somebody might say, um, somebody who's supportive, somebody who's caring, somebody who's compassionate, someone who's protective, someone who has a sacrificial love. These are all attributes of God. And I love each of my children with a fierce, protective, encouraging, and exciting love. I love them so much, but I know that God loves them more. And my mother loves me, and I'm so thankful to have her in my life, but God loves me more. And what a love that is. Jesus reminded his disciples and reminds us also that we can experience that love and become a part of this loving relationship with God as our mother, God as our father, through Jesus. He said, I'm all that you need. It's me. I'm the way. God loves us all. God loves each and every person. He wants each and every heart to turn back to him, to come back to him. And we use those words to come back because it's in God that where we started. It's in him. From where we come, it's God. And so he woos us. He He puts things and, and people in our lives and, and these senses that we have where we can feel we can feel a love coming from somewhere even if we don't know what it is. He wants us to return to him because he loves us so much. If you hear the word father and you have a good experience with your father and you can imagine, you can think about the love that your father has for you, when you think about the love that God has for you as as your father, it's like a million times more. The same way with a mother, if you have a good relationship with your mother, or you're a mother yourself who loves your children, you know, you know the depths of that love, the, how intense that love is. Just think of God loving us as a mother. It's like a million times more than that. And all he wants is for us to love him back, to come back to him. And we want to say, how? Well, how do I get into this loving relationship? I know God loves me. Okay, how do I get into this relationship? And Jesus was saying, I am the way. It's me. And so it's through Jesus. It's through Jesus' sacrifice and, um, and he, his death on the cross, his resurrection, his, uh, his ascension, his, the Holy Spirit coming to to dwell within us. It's all of these things that bring us to this place where we can, we can live as a whole person. We can live wholly. We can live as we're meant to live. When we have that relationship with God, and we have that relationship with God through Jesus. And when I hear those words um, that Jesus is, that no... The only way to the Father is through Jesus. Sometimes we, we hear those words or we might even find ourselves using those words to condemn others or to let others know, like, hey, you, you don't got the way. You don't got Jesus. That's not what Jesus was using it for. He was saying, hey, you got me. You got me. You get to have this relationship. Amen. And so when we think about Jesus and we think about relationship, it has to be an encouragement. It has to be with love. It has to be something that is pouring out of us. Not to convert people or to make people feel like they have to turn, but to bring them into a love that they experience for the first time. They're like, how do you have this in you? And then you can say, this is not even me. <laughs> I wish I could tell you this was me. I wish I could tell you this is as a result of the person who raised me. But the person who raised me is the person she is. Because of God. The person I am, um, I am this person because, because of God. Because I have Jesus. So yeah, church, I just wanted to share with you that um, while we celebrate our mothers and, and we think about those who long to be mothers that are not able to or um, are finding difficulty in 
we, we lift them up in prayer. And um, I just want us all to, to just remember that the love that we experience from mothers is a love that exists because God put it there. Because that's who God is. But I just wanted to share that. So uh, if you could bow your heads with me, please. I'm just going to uh, pray over uh, this service. Father, God, we love you so, so much. And we are just in awe of the love that you have for us, the love that you so intricately explain to us in a way that we can understand. And you know that we understand um, people. We try to understand people. We try to understand relationships. We're in families, and in those families we have relationships, Father. And it's through relationships that you witness to us. Father, I thank you so much for the people that you've placed in my life. Each of the mothers that you've placed in my life, Father, thank you. I thank you for loving them, for creating them, for giving them the capacity to whether they chose to or not, you gave them the capacity to love. Father, tonight, uh, I just want to lift up all of the women that, uh, that are experiencing this day that may have a void in their lives, whether it's the loss of a mother, the absence of a mother, the loss of a child, the perceived inability to have a child, Father. I pray that you witness to each and every one of us that the love that you have for us surpasses all other loves that we can experience. And that even as mothers, even as those longing to be mothers, Father, the love that you have for us, the love that you have for our children or our children to be or those that we will be able to care for as if they are um, were born from ourselves, Father. You love them far more than we ever could. So we lift up our mothers to you. We lift up all of your children to you, Father, your sons and your daughters. If this day is a difficult day, Father, I just pray that you continue to comfort them. Shower them with your motherly love. Embrace them with your motherly embrace. Let you continue to guide us through this world full of complexities and, and trials and, and things that we learn about more and more each day, Father. We know that you'll continue to guide us, and we thank you for that. And Father, I pray we, we sit and we listen. And we wait for you. And we listen for you. Oh, we love you so much. We give you this day. We give you this day. We give you our time, our praise, our worship, God. In your name, Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Can anyone song me? Church deals, we're hearing this is oh, just Mary did that. God is love. God's love is deeper and deep, heavier and heavy. And it's not kind of, you know, it's that's life, that's living. You know, like the love is unconditional. It's heavy. You know, and then you know when you feel of God, you know. Your mother, your father, sister, brother, you know, you feel that love. I think it's heavy, but well, God's love is hope. Yeah, I cannot even say it over you know what I mean? You see me playing around, of course, but we're going to count it one more for God and for who he is and 
what he has given us and his, his word that he has given us to know. Thank you, Father, for revealing your love to us. Right? It's amazing that uh, you are you are the God who created everything. And you desire Lord this this only for us. You desire your will is that we can feel this love. That we can have this love. You know, Lord, your will for us is that everybody come to know this love. And this love is through your son Jesus, Lord. He 
say like oh who, who, whosoever believes shall not perish but have eternal life long forever lord you are eternal lord. All this time, Lord. All this time without you, Lord. And now, uh, it's to know that the love is always pursuing us. You know, he says that you, you, can, you cannot love us more, Lord. You don't love me more than a sinner. You don't love me more than somebody who's not doing good. Some days I'm not doing good, Lord. But your love and your grace covers us. And we just praise you, Lord, for the kind of God that you are. That your grace is there. Every time that we turn, you dare, Lord. There's nothing we can do right now. That, 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 that if we turn with our hearts to you, Lord, you will, you will save us. Because you love us. Uh, Lord, you, you, Lord, you also praise you. We love you. And I just pray that, Lord, if, if nobody, anybody who doesn't know you, Lord, come to know you. And if they don't know you, if nobody knows you, if there's somebody that doesn't know you, Lord, that want to know you, I just pray that uh, your children, we rise up and uh, try to be that love for somebody so that they can come to, to know the real love and connect to, to the source of love. Yeah, Lord, we praise you. We give you all the glory, Lord. Just bless all the ears and the hearts of today, Lord, that is hearing this. Because this is the truth. This is the truth that sets you free, Lord. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the lie. Oh, Lord Jesus, we lift it higher and higher and higher. Oh, yeah. We love you, we praise you. I like this stop, Lord. Lord. Yeah, no need stop. Even after this, even after this computer stop, you down, no need stop. Just praise the Lord. Keep the prayer open. You know, we already agree in love. Don't you say amen? You mean automatic in love. Love you, love. It's not going to end. So. Mm -hmm. Family. Love you guys. Love you guys. Praise the Lord. Seek His love. Live in His love. Marinate His love. Marinate a long time. And then give it to somebody else. Or will be honored. Oh, I just finished it. <laughs> okay.